Uh, so happy new year. I know that this is kind of an arbitrary thing. This just happens to be where our calendar ends and we start a new one. Um, there are multiple new years all around the year, but we're going to play with this one and the energy of this one. And there is tradition, even though it is a new year. Um, the tradition in our teaching is to go back to basics in January. And so for the rest of the month, I will be speaking from the introduction chapters of our textbook, which is called The Science of Mind, which makes sense. Um, it was written by Ernest Holmes and originally released in the 1920s. We use the edited version that was released in the late 1930s um, and all of the other umpteen bajillion talks and, and um, writings that he did. His, his TV show is still available if you go to the archives. There's just a lot of teaching he did. But now we're going to go back to basics. In 2021, the Centers for Spiritual Living have decided that, that our theme will be timeless wisdom, evolutionary vision. And that is a very Ernest Holmes thing to think about. We don't pretend that we have created anything new. Ernest Holmes said he was not a creator, but a synthesizer of the information he had access to at the time. And so he took all of the religions and all of the metaphysics he could find, took the best of it and distilled it down to principles. And that is why we can honor all faiths, because they're all the same principles. How they, they work out in the world is, is a different story. But they're all the same principles. And Ernest Holmes was no fool. He didn't think that he had all the information that would ever be known. So he said that we should be open at the top. And that is why we have an evolutionary vision that we are moving forward and growing. And now we go back to basics. So if you have never heard of the science of mind, this is a great time to come together and maybe bring your friends and just get to know what the basic teaching is. Your job is to not swallow it whole. Bring your common sense and your critical mind with you. We learn to live from our hearts, but we don't leave our brains behind in this teaching. You have to decide which tools will fit in your hands. You get to decide, get to and have to do all of the work yourself. You can be supported, but no one can do it for you. So I will start with a quotation that is kind of the basics of who we are and what we do. Ernest Holmes wrote, the study of the science of mind is the study of first cause, spirit, mind, or that invisible essence, that ultimate stuff and intelligence from which everything comes, the power back of creation. So sometimes we call this life energy, this being that is beyond words, the thing itself, the essence. It has a bajillion different names. And it is the only power that is the universe, no matter what name you give it. We sometimes it's easier to actually talk about what God or whatever name you give it isn't rather than is. Because when you're trying to talk about the infinite, I have to use, well, when I'm trying to talk about the infinite, I am stuck with finite language. And so as, as I've read, I'm sorry, I'm going to be sneezing a lot today. I'm not going to affirm that. I am going to sneeze one more time. <laughs> Excuse me. Um. I have heard trying to describe this infinite being as trying to describe the scent of the number nine. And so the experience I've had many, many times now is somebody finds out I'm a minister. Oh my God, it's a female minister. It's okay. And they tell me first, first off, they don't believe in God. They're an atheist. They don't believe in God. And so what I've learned to do is tell me is ask them, tell me about the God you don't believe in. And thus far, every single time, I have not believed in that God either. I do not believe in a mean God. 
I don't believe in a teasing God that puts all sorts of good things out into the world and then explains why you can't have it. I don't believe in hell and we don't teach heaven or hell except as states of mind that you might get into while here on earth. We do not teach the old man with the lightning bolts and the long white beard who's sitting up on a cloud looking suspiciously like Zeus. We don't teach that God is male or female. It is both and neither. It is a principle, something that goes above and beyond the whole idea of anything a human could be. And yet, each and every one of us has our personal human defined experience of this infinite being. If you take foundations, you will have the chance to, first of all, go deeper into the idea of God as principle. Go really deeply into the idea that we don't care what the words are. But we, and we're not worried about you memorizing a long list of thou shalt and thou shalt nots. We are all interested in having the direct experience of God. And each of us is responsible for and capable of doing that very thing. And so while we might sound a little woo-woo sometimes, the truth is this is a very practical teaching. And so as Holmes said, let us then approach the science of mind, the science of spiritual psychology. I mean, that's kind of a popular thing these days. Everybody knows about spiritual psychology. We're all doing it. Sometimes we call it positive psychology. But as he wrote, let us then approach the science of mind, the science of spiritual psychology, with awe but not with fear. With a truly humble thought, but not with a sense that we are unworthy. Let us approach it normally, happily, willing to accept, glad to experiment, hoping and believing that as a result of our efforts, we shall derive a great good. You see, the more we get to understand and experience the God of our understanding, the God who in 12 steps words, the God we can do business with, the more we let go of um, you know, looking at the closed stores and start lifting up our eyes to the mountains and seeing the human that happens to be physically six feet away from us in this moment, the more we do that and choose to see the world as it truly is, rather than what our emotional or fearful state might suggest, the closer we get to the divine, the closer we get to ourselves, and the closer we get to other people. So why does that matter? Why does it matter what we think God is? Uh, right before service, I looked out my front window and there was this thing in my driveway. And from the back, I couldn't tell what the heck it was. When it turned its head, I realized it was like a falcon or a hawk or something like that. But it was standing on the ground beside my car like it wanted the keys or something. And it didn't look like any bird that I had ever recognized. It wasn't until I saw its face and its wings that I was like, oh, okay. As a matter of fact, my very first words are, were, oh my God, what is that? Just because we see something that seems unfamiliar, just because we see something that we expect to see doesn't mean that's what it is. For a minute there, I thought there was a chicken in my front yard. That doesn't make that hawk or that eagle or whatever it is a chicken. It just happens to be in a place I wasn't expecting to see it. Now, maybe it's injured. And if it is, I'm sure I'll find it out there after service and I will call somebody to help. But in the meantime, it's possible it just showed up in a weird place so that I would notice it. Because spirit does that sometimes. Ernest Holmes also wrote, and this is important, and it's the first step in our teaching, in my opinion. He wrote, we are afraid of the universe in which we live, suspicious of the people around us, uncertain of the salvation, a little aside, salvation in our teaching means healing, not saving, uncertain of the salvation of our own souls. 
when we learn to trust the universe, we shall be happy, prosperous, and well. And so that is our work here in the beginning, is to begin to get to know the God of truth. Get to know the spirit of life and the universe as it truly is. And I have a little thought experiment for you. I found this a little while ago in a antique store. And it just arrested me. It just caught my attention. And when I brought it up to buy it, the guy looked at me like, well, that's creepy. But here's the thing. Even if I can't see God's face, my assumption is that the spirit of life itself is conspiring on my behalf. The whole universe is in on it, on throwing the lifelong surprise party that is our, our due as heirs to the kingdom of heaven. When I look at this now, each time I imagine that this veil lifting, I see something else. I see um, a friend that is trying really hard not to laugh underneath that veil, has put on a hat so that I can't quite see the shape of the face and the head. Might even have a bad case of the giggles by now. I see a beautiful woman. I see um, friends that I need to speak to and have heart conversations with. And I see the God of my understanding who is entirely ready, willing, and happy to have a very personal relationship with me. So it's very, very important that even when we can't quite see the divine being as we think we understand it, we make the assumption that we can trust this universe. And as Holmes said, when we learn to trust the universe, when we go through this process of letting go of all of the lies we've been taught about ourselves and other people and the way the world works, all of that bad information, when we root that out and allow truth to be seen and heard and felt and experienced, what we get is a life in which we are happy, prosperous, and well. Where everyone we meet is a friend. And when we look through our human eyes, the only thing out there to see is God. And the only thing looking is this thing we call God. Now, one of the tools that we use in order to get into that mental space is prayer. And so when I go to prayer, it's slightly different than what I was raised with and certainly most mainstream religions. What we do in prayer is to acknowledge what God really is, to recognize ourselves as part of that and then to speak truth, which takes the place of all of the old fears and beliefs. So join me now if you feel so moved. If you want to close your eyes, that's fine. And take these words as if they were your own and just taste them and see if they work for you. And so in this moment, in this precious eternal now, I recognize the divine, the life of God itself within me, giving life to every single cell and every organ. I see the divine being outside my window moving the trees as the trees. It is everyone, everywhere, all the time. It is, to use a big word, omnipresent, omniscient, meaning knowing everything and omnipotent, able to do anything and everything. And I am awash in it, as is every other being everywhere and everyone. And so I speak my, my word right now for all beings everywhere. And when I know that all of these God beings, all of these expressions of the divine are filled with the very light of truth and it shines so brightly that no shadow has any chance of staying. All of the old bad information, all of the old mistaken ideas that we have outgrown now go back into the nothingness from which they came and the truth of our spirits, the truth of these magnificent souls is now fully present, fully visible at the physical level. And as that happens, 
what happens at the physical level is that all disease fades away. Everything that looks like poverty or lack or limitation or sin, sickness and death, all of that simply goes back into the nothingness from which it came. It becomes an old piece of paper with instructions we no longer use because they, we know that they don't work. I celebrate and bless the truth coming through clearly. I celebrate and bless the peace and the love and the joy that is every single cell of every body everywhere. I celebrate this as the truth of my being. And I am so grateful that spirit is what it is and not what I feared it or I might be. I'm grateful for the natural evolution of spirit in form. And trusting in that, I simply step away and release this to all of the natural laws that go to work, bringing it into form, bringing it into the physical world that I might celebrate and witness. And if this has landed as true with you, I ask you to affirm with me. And so it is.